Hey guys, I'm over here in my RV. Um, sitting in here is the original thermostat, and it is terrible. This thing is about as accurate as a hand grenade. Really aggravated the fact that the contacts have to be constantly clean. They'll corrode a little bit, and this thing here doesn't hold very well. So when the furnace kicks on, if it arcs, it'll actually push it back off, and it's done that. A lot of these have a problem where you're wondering, my heater's not working, but you look in and you see it's making contact. Well, it's not getting enough power through to make the relay fully close, and your thermostat don't cycle good. So what I've done is, uh, I'll start out with this. Um, I took one of these Dimplex that I had for a spare. It's 110 volt, and these are only 16 amp. So I didn't want to use this one. And it's not very accurate. This is not very accurate. Now, you're wondering, why is he using a 110 or 20 volt thermostat that belongs to baseboard heat or radiant heat of some kind? Why would he be using, these are like, this one's for floor heat. That's what these are for. It's terribly inaccurate. It's about eight degrees. However, one brand, one single brand, is literally extremely accurate. Now, it doesn't show the markings, but you'll get used to it pretty quick. I'll just take a magic marker and put a dot where 72 or whatever is. But I want you to listen. I'm going to hold my phone down there, the camera phone, whatever, down here near it. And you can listen to it. You can hear that click. I'm only moving this thermostat about that far. About three degrees. Three temperature degrees. Now, although this is for 110 volt, it's for 25 amps, I believe. 25, 22 amps, you see it up in there, it's just 22 amps, right there. 22 amps, uh, one and a quarter, or one and a half horsepower. And if you do the math on it, that means it'll handle about two and a half amps of 12 volt. Over here, is, this over here is only one amp. It only requires one amp. But at one amp, these contacts, man, they're about freaking worthless. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how easy this is to change out. So I'm gonna pull this loose. Here's my wires coming in for my thermostat, my two wires, and I just twisted them together to try this out. So we'll take them loose, and no need to kill the power. Now this is positive, but I'm, I'm, this is a wood wall. I'm not worried about it. Take the screws out, and I'll remove this, and I'm gonna show you how I'm setting the next one in. The old thermostat removed. However, this model right here is very accurate, and now you can probably hear it better. You hear the clicking? Very positive contact in there, right inside of there, and it's pushing on a reed switch in here, and doing my math on it's actually almost two and a half amps it will handle without any issue. It'll probably do 10, but it'll handle two and a half without any issue on a one amp circuit. Um, and actually it's 0.96 is what it calls for on the anticipator. We have to get the pocket enlarged for this to fit into the pocket. And I'm going to go ahead and mount it at that angle, maybe go in this direction or that direction, so that it's uh, covering the existing holes. And you'll see here that it'll look about like that. So not, not terrible, and it'll come out pretty nice. The one thing you want to be sure to do, and a lot of people err on this, if you change out a thermostat for an RV, please realize your walls are thin. They're, they're not real thick. And the cold from behind the wall, see all the holes? They will affect the thermostat. So even though your thermostat, you're setting it on 75 degrees and it's like, man, it never gets over 60 in here. It's because the cold transfers through. And one of the best things to do is put you some fiberglass behind it to insulate it away from the cold. Um, now, what we're going to do here is this same thing here. We're going to, when we mount this one, we'll do the same because I don't want the cold from in, inside this refrigerator cabinet. There's the refrigerator right there. So, inside the wall, um, you know, it's an RV. There's, there's not much in there. Um, there's fiberglass, but you can almost kind of feel a little bit of cool air in there for the cavity of the refrigerator, which is open to the outdoors. The cavity is you have a vent up top and a vent down at the bottom letting air in so it lets cool cool air now we don't want that so we're going to do the same we're going to insulate that 
Now, I will enlarge this hole respective to the original screw holes that's on here, and we'll show you mounting that. All right, guys, now I've got that nibbed away, made a nice mess with the vacuum cleaner and hanging up here. This, however, is three degrees difference. This is six to 10, it's just crazy. If you park and your trailer's leaning a little, these down here, most of them will not even work right. This one will, and it's only about 16 to 20 bucks. And I'll put a link down below the video to it. You're gonna love this one. Um, you can use it on all your RV heaters. They all have that line of amperage that goes to them if it's a two wire system. So now we're gonna hook this up and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to cold, which will be going that direction so it don't cause it to kick on. Now I just have a red and black wire going down, which this is a hot and this is a common until it connects and then it's a hot passing through because that's how the systems on these Suburban and uh, Atwoods will work. So very tight. Now, all I'm going to do is I want this knob out this way towards the room and I will tuck in here and here into the wall. I have plenty of space for that. And most of them you'll find you've got plenty of space to do this. And then it just simply will mount like that. And I'll center it up the best I can like that. I've got quite a bit of insulation in behind there and I'm gonna stuff a little more in there just because. I don't want no leakage coming up through there. Cold air from the outside. All right, line them in. And then I want to square it up pretty nicely. You know, you don't have to worry about these as far as leveling your vehicle. These don't need that. Well, I just want to do it cosmetically speaking and then put the other screw in. Just until they touch good, don't over tighten. So the cover will go back on there's 40 degrees so you can actually use this that for 40 degrees you can set it down at 40 if it gets almost to freezing in your RV this will kick on your furnace all right and one note you can put a toggle switch underneath it to bypass this so if you don't want it to kick on at 40 degrees you can flip the toggle switch or you can pull the fuse out they're usually labeled well Pull the fuse out in the winter time if you don't want your furnace to run or disconnect your batteries, which is what most people do. Most people take their batteries out of their coach or RV during the winter time. So now we're gonna kick it on here, right there. So this is 50, 60. Um, this is supposed to be, I believe, 70, 75. So right there is about 72, about the temperature inside here now. So it's kicked on. The furnace is going into its beginning cycle and here pretty quick it will start running and I'll just put this down here All right I'm gonna speed it up it's about a 20 second delay and that is as easy as it gets pretty simple yes I know it's crooked but it mounted in the original sp spot and it's no more of this crap so we don't have to worry about that anymore. And with a standard thermostat, not like a house, a house requires a particular type of anticipator that will run the fan a particular amount of time. But these furnaces are set up with a air blower that blows out the gas or fumes and before it allows new gas to come in and it don't matter. They just need a positive contact. You could just use a light switch, work that well. It works better for this purpose. And it's only three degrees. No more waking up in the morning either too cold or too hot. Very good accuracy. And for $16, park any way you want. Requires no batteries. There you go. Death bottom video, guys. Quick one, guys.